now that the uh, Cilidat 2 is wrapping up, what's the kind of future mm. direction for, the, for these clinical trials? Right. So um, at Imperial, um, th I think they will be doing a trial on panorexia and one potentially on chronic pain. Um, so, and I will actually be helping out on a DMT trial, which will be a longer fusion trial of DMT to see whether um, basically if you have a longer uh, infusion, uh, so, so a, a longer experience, will that increase the therapeutic benefits and potentials of DMT? Um, so that's where I'm going to be working next. Um, but Ros is kind of developing a clinic arm for the synthesis retreat so that they can, in fact, um, invite depressed participants to come and have a retreat um, experience with a very lengthy integration program that she's developing around that. So um, I may help out a little bit there, but COVID is kind of sending everything a bit haywire. So um, I may help out with a few of the retreats, but I've kind of signed up to do a year and a half um, on a DMT trial. So well. that's where I'm going to be heading. Um, yeah. So the, um, yeah, so lots, lots still happening. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, I suppose really it's all just the push to, to reschedule and so that, yeah, this work can hopefully or, or people can start to access the treatment sooner rather than later. Right. And can I ask how long the infusion is for the DMT? Um, oh, I think it will be because it's... It's normally about 20 minutes to heart. I think the peak is, is normally about 15 minutes, but I think it will, it won't be probably more than 45 minutes. So okay. yeah, I think the peak will probably be the same, but it will be a slower ascent and a slower descent. That's interesting. Yeah. Um, with, with the idea of, of, of um, yeah, hopefully uh, because I, I, I participated on a DMT trial um, at Imperial and it's incredibly quick. So you kind of, mm propelled into consciousness soup was the way I described it and it's quite um, a bit dazzling it's quite hard to work out where to look or what's going on or what's important I mean and I do remember more on the ascent that um, the things that that I took back with me seem to be more on the ascent of the experience so maybe um, elongating the ascent will mean that you that more you can bring more back but we'll, yeah, we'll have to see. I suppose that that's that's the the point of seeing whether whether this is true or not, or whether people will just be like, oh, that was really intense. I don't want to make of that. <laughs> I was going to say it's famously kind of overwhelming and intense uh, experience, yeah. which I think is why <laughs> the slow release DMT of ayahuasca is, is kind of maybe seen as a way to kind of yeah, yeah do this yeah, more, more slowly. Yeah. I wonder. Yeah, I wonder if yeah. that'd be interesting to see if if. Uh, we can kind of get new kinetics psychologically out of this from having the slow, mm. slow increase and slow decrease. Yes, yeah. Has mm -hmm. there been much research yeah, looking be. at the kind of short, short periods of DMT therapeutically? Um, well, no, I don't think there has okay. really. So, I mean, it will be interesting to, um, you know, I had a, a kind of phenom phenomenological interview after my experience, which actually was incredibly useful um, because it did make mm. me, think about the experience in uh and i think it did help to kind of ground the experience and make me think about it in new ways so yeah it will be interesting to see you know with that kind of more of a therapeutic container around it whether that will also help people you know find more use in it um right. i suppose we won't really know until we've done it <laughs> <laughs> and i ask if what the, the uh i guess the phenomenological character of it was for you because you know for most people i think it's this kind of kind of wacky other world full of entities that you're interacting with was it that kind of that kind of experience um it was yeah so i mean it was incredibly busy um i remember a sense of it felt like i dropped into consciousness soup and that lots of people could drop into this consciousness soup and it wasn't the whole experience didn't feel like it configured around me as in i was the center of the experience um and I went in with the intention of deepening my compassion towards um, depressed people because I've never suffered from depression. And I knew that I was about to start the um, Silodep 2 trial. Um, 
And I remember feeling really bamboozled and wilted. And it felt like, even though I was disembodied, that this presence lifted my head and said, well, you came here for a reason, like pay attention. So, so even though I was disembodied, some, something lifted my head and encouraged me some benign presence that I didn't see or have a sense of to, to pay attention. And then this was kind of on the descent. I kind of noticed, you know, the kind of jolly rainbowness of, of what the experience had been. And then suddenly this vignette of a, a door I'd been reading a Jeanette Winterson book and she was very much a latch latch was it latch door kid key or whatever the the phrase is and there was a sense of a presence kind of sitting on a door you know sort of the neglected child whose parents are not really around um and I could feel the heaviness and the grayness of, of that experience um so it was interesting because it was so it was like this kind of you know this is what it's like when things feel really alive and full of zest and and the kind of heaviness and grayness of so it felt like it gave me a little sense of ah this is depression this is not depression and then as i came out um i came out and but remember feeling a real sense of awe and i and i said to um chris timmerman who's chilean that i felt quite sheepish and i really don't think he got it because uh it's not really a, a Chilean turn of phrase and you feel like a sheep and I was like kind of sheep you know or, <laughs> like, oh yeah okay um so um yeah so it was quite a humbling experience um and then I just had some strange synchronicities after it which were a bit odd with to do with money but um as a consequence in order to integrate that I decided that I would pay my cosmic rent which means that um whenever I go out into London I will have um some change in my pocket and I will um pay my cosmic rent to the homeless so I'll always try and give a few pounds to to whoever's homeless so that I suppose that felt like slightly my integration from that experience (laughs) or the one the one change that I made but I do think yeah it did it did deliver in terms of helping me have a sense of what is how heavy and gray it is you know and how difficult it must be to be depressed yeah i mean that's really interesting i wonder if if having an intention really maybe primes you to have those kinds of potentially in, it, those kinds of insights because you know if you look at the the rick strassman's work that kind of started the second renaissance i guess that that seemed to just be delivering it people had these strange experiences struggled to integrate them you know, the case mm. reports didn't seem to be full of kind of healing experiences or anything like that. It was just kind ah. of mind boggling, you know, kind of, and on top yeah, of yeah. this idea that not really knowing which way is up in reality afterwards. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe, maybe it did. Cause yeah, I didn't feel, I mean, it was, it was, I mean, and I suppose the analogy I use or, or my sense of it was, it was almost as if, I can imagine what it felt like being born. Like you kind of came mm. into the world and it was just really intense and really full on. And you didn't know what to do. Almost like you were looking from the eyes of a baby, like you didn't know what to look at. And there was so much to see. And what, what should you focus on that? That to me, it felt like that's probably what it was like when I was born. Not that I could categorically know, but it felt like it was probably similar to that. Right. Um, but yeah, maybe, maybe, maybe the intention and this benign hand going, Oh, you wanted to get something out of this. Why don't you? <laughs> Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs>